I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, born in 1934. A friend of my mother and father uh, gave me a birth for birthday present and, you know, when I was two years old, a set of toy wooden animals that had sat on wooden platforms and they hooked together and there was an elephant and a hippopotamus and a rhinoceros and so forth and uh, you could pull them around on the floor and that from that I, I got tribute my interest from that set of toys. In 1937 my mother and father took me to see Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey in Atlanta Georgia and it was my that was my first circus I was three years old and uh, I'm glad to say that I got in on the last year of the baggage stock with Ringling Barnum and uh, also the six pole big top and that was the last year that Sam Gumpert's managed the big show. The next year however when the, when the circus came to town well we had we were fortunate we had two circuses big ones come to Atlanta within a short t time. That would have been what year? 1938 the next year and uh, the first show in was Robbins Brothers. Of course, Clyde Beatty was the, the superstar. And I do remember that act. I mean, I'm, well, I don't remember much about him, but I remember his wife coming in. She had an elephant and I think a horse that she came into the arena with. And, and um, uh, they, they built a tiger or a lion rode around on, on them. And uh, I do remember that. Uh, of course, Beatty. Uh, it was only by a stroke of luck that we saw Clyde Beatty on that Robin show or, and the Hippo because the Cole Brothers show had folded earlier around in, in August, I suppose, except early September, and they sent five cars of stuff from the Cole show over to Robbins to augment it, and that included the Clyde Beatty act and also the, the Hippo. And so we, what we saw was a 20-car show. Then just a few weeks later, here comes the Algae Barnes and Sells Floto Circus presenting stupendous new features from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. In advance of that, old Floyd King, who was press agent for Robbins, had run ads in the Atlanta papers, why wait, come see Robbins Brothers. You will not see Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. It folded in Scranton, Pennsylvania in July or in, during the summer anyway, and uh, this is not Ringling Brothers that's coming. Come see the, our circus. Well, Ringling uh, countered with an ad that says, the Ringling Brothers will indeed appear in Atlanta. Now, that show came in November. Oh, I, if I don't have my route sheet in front of me. 7th and 8th. Seventh, about the 7th and 8th of November. It was a Monday and a Tuesday, and we went down. I remember going to the lot, and it was, had been raining, and the lot was sort of muddy. And uh, I remember uh, that, and this first recollection I have of seeing a hippopotamus. The cage was spotted on the lot, and the guy opened the cage side, took side panels off, and watered the hippo, and I think threw in some food. But that's the first time I can remember seeing a hippopotamus. And of course, that was the famous hippopotamus, Lotus, who was the most famous circus hippo of all time. Uh, we were over by the menagerie tent, and one of these guys that worked on the show picked up the sidewall of the canvas and all, so we could all look inside, and I remember seeing the giraffe sit in there. That was a giraffe that had been sent over to the show by Ringling. Ringling, early when, when they augmented the uh, Barnes uh, uh, Cell Floto show <clears throat> in South Dakota, they had sent some 20-odd cars uh, to carry all the stuff, including Gargantua and the giraffe and the two African elephants and other things to go over the close to their own big top. They didn't use the barn sell a little big top. That was a very strong show. Now, uh, I did not go the first day to the show. I guess my father had business or something, so I went to the matinee on the second day of the show, which was the last day of the show. And by then, a weather front had come through Atlanta, and it was very, very cold. And uh, I, my nurse, uh, Willie Mae Lindsay, brought me to the circus grounds from home. We walked. We didn't live too far away. To meet my dad, who would have come out on a streetcar from downtown uh, to, to join us. And I remember him saying, though I have no conscious recollection of it, that ere I came in my blue snowsuit, well, I was very frightened of clowns. Clowns has really spooked me, and uh, 
I, I remember being seeing one in 37 the year before on the Ringling Show that had a light that came on in his face, and that was spooky to me. So, so uh, I kept look, looking as we were lined up to get tickets at the main entrance, or had tickets and waiting in line to go in to the menagerie. Uh, the sideshow banner line was off to the side, and I nudged my father and said, can't we go over and see that? I can remember consciously thinking that if I could go over there, I would be wouldn't have to face the music but seeing those clowns. But anyway, he said, no, no, that's not any good. We're going straight ahead. So we went into the menagerie, and it was a crowd, a big crowd there. And um, I was uh, looking at a cage wagon, and uh, I saw through a tangle of feet. You know, I'm only a little, a little fellow, and uh, mostly I'm seeing people from the waist down. And uh, I could see uh, clown shoes in between this tangle of feet, and I thought, oh, gosh, what is this? So. I turned around and looked at the cage wagon, and unknown to me, the clown had come up to my father and uh, asked my father what my name was, and uh, it turned out to be Felix Adler, and he, uh, dad told me, he said, Richie, turn around, and it did, and now, well, there I was face to face with this guy <laughs> in his clown makeup, famous, his, his one that he was famous for, it was mostly white, as I recall. Anyway, he picks me up in the arms and addressed me by my name. I said, well, this fellow knows everything, you know. <laughs> and he said, uh, what, what do you want Santa Claus to bring you? And, of course, Christmas was just the next month. And so uh, I thought, gee, this is really not so bad after all. Well, that cured my fear of clowns. And so uh, we went on in to enjoy the show. And, of course, I always love to spend time in the menagerie.